Hello, I'm Guy Kesteven and this is a compilation catch-up of kit I've been reviewing on my Pace RC295 Long Termer. Uh, last built up with the, the base kit, kind of went on about a year ago with this new colour frame and I just thought it was about time I caught up on some of the small parts on it before I debuild it and fit some other new kit and that will result in some separate videos of the key factors on this bike as well. So this is just a little catch up on the bike uh, but I'll link all the other larger product views on things like tyres, wheels, uh, brakes that I've been using, cassettes, that kind of thing, uh, shock, uh, separately. So cracking on, uh, we may as well start from the front, uh, ended up using, I've been through loads of grips this year, but current favorite, PNW components, uh, the new loan grip. As you can see, got plenty of different patterning on there. It's got a slight flare on it as it comes to the back there. So it's a little bit more padded, various ribs. I like those because they stop the uh, mushroom grip splaying out too much. That works really well. Uh, discreet little collar on there and taking a bit of a battering as you can see from tree strikes that kind of thing but otherwise just just a really really nice compound reasonable price and a ton of colors as well uh formula cura brakes i'll be doing that as a separate review uh but basically the forgotten brake uh italian company they've had some real headline brakes in the past like super light r1 uh, the one downhill brake which is super powerful. They tend to go for quite an organic looking lever and then larger than average pistons on their calipers. And they always used to be a bit finicky, to be honest. I mean, they had very light ergal bolts, that kind of thing. But this Cura has just been super solid. I've run it uh, most of the winter last year. Um, Paddy, uh, one young lad who uh, helped me with some testing, he took it to the Alps for several months, absolutely golden out there. This is the two-pot version, so two-cylinder, and it's relatively light. For the amount of power you've got, you've got a nice, just a really good balanced lever feel. It's kind of positive, but also nice and progressive. There's no bike point issues. Uh, pad spacing is a little closer. It can scuff unless you line it up perfectly. The only real and it's uh, the only real issue is that it's really hard to get spares from now, uh, just because they're not as round as much as they were, and they've actually recently kind of lost their major UK distributor. Uh, so, but if you are looking for an alternative brake and you don't mind hunting down spare parts for it, maybe stockpiling because you get free pads and you get free bleed kit and everything uh, and hose pieces in there with it. It's a really, really good all-round break, and it deserves a lot more praise than it gets. Uh, what else is on here? Pace stem, still rock solid, boxy, light, super short. It's about as short as you can get without actually cutting into the bar. Uh, Fall bolt, nice and broad. Uh, I think they only do it in this one size, though, so you do need to want the short stem, but who doesn't these days? Uh, what else? Uh, Santa Cruz carbon bar. I've had this a few years now, but still my favorite, one of my favorite bars in terms of feel, in terms of shape. Just a really, really good carbon bar. Uh, Code RSC brakes. Obviously, they're the older ones. They're not the stealth one, but these are the top ones with that fancy little bolt kit on there. I love a Code. Uh, I know they don't always get masses of love on the forum, uh, but I think as a sort of heavy-duty trail enduro brake, they're absolutely great. Plenty of power, loads of modulation, great control. And uh, yeah, had zero problems with them. They, I always tend to run a consistent rear brake, even if I'm swapping front brakes, just A, because I don't want both brakes to fail, but also it's just good to have a benchmark, and they've been a great benchmark so far. Not so good. Uh, RockShox Reverb Post, uh, when it's working, it's absolutely great. But if you know reverbs, you know that a spongy, bouncy uh, top of the stroke is pretty much a uh, regular occurrence, so I pretty much have to bleed it or pop it before every ride, uh, which gets a bit boring, to be honest. But when it works, it works, and I just can't be bothered to chase all the hosing out and replace it because I've generally got other things to change at the same time. Uh, what I do really like from RockShox, 
What I do really like from RockShox, massive fan of the Super Deluxe Ultimate Shock still. Uh, did a few full review on it, and it's still outstanding. I kind of, I keep thinking, oh, do I want a lighter shock on this bike? Because it can be made into a relatively light bike. But at the end of the day, the low speed control and just the overall consistent feel of this shock is outstanding. So when I, like, get into the gnarly stuff and start really pushing. Because this bike has slack, you know, properly progressive geometry. It's long, it's really slack, 150 mil front, 135 mil rear. And uh, that shock just really, really adds depth and uh, great damping control. And also being a really great pedaling setup as well, because you can, you know, it, the pace pedals well anyway, but you can just easily reach down and start moving that low speed compression about the only thing i have noticed when i've uh, when the bike's been sat and i've not used it a lot both the adjuster rings tend to stiffen up quite a lot so even if it's in kind of storage make sure you keep moving them regularly just to keep them freed up uh what else uh old sram gx i guess it is old now uh you've got the new gx crank with the window in it now these have been totally trouble free and to be honest the dub bottom brackets lasted really well on this bike as well uh garbarup cassette lighter than xt the xtr and sram from what i remember and cheaper as well not by much in either respect but a really good alternative cnc component coming out of poland and i pretty much everything i ride now is electronic gx axis all the test bikes coming through seem to be gx axis so it's really, really nice to remember just how good an X01 rear mech can feel with good old cables and analog shifting. It really does feel great. And again, just nice to have something that's completely trouble free. I don't have to worry about whether the batteries run out or whether I've forgotten the battery because I've been recharging it or anything like that. Just super solid. Uh, performance on the shifting and very crisp and very fast uh, probably the fastest shifting you can get I mean the Garbrook's not quite as quick as an official SRAM uh, cassette's not quite as clean shifting either but in terms of thumb to rear mech movement and having that front flipper as well which I you know really miss off the new axis uh, very very hard to beat uh, SRAM analog now what haven't I talked about uh, Tires, uh, I'll bring them up separately, and wheels as well. It's, I've run a bunch of different tires and wheels uh, over the year, so I'll bring those out separately, uh, particularly the Maxxis Severe that's been on the rear, and then the Forecaster that's on the front. But I've just switched, as you can see, to Schwalbe Rocket Ron front and rear on reserve uh, 28s. Uh, why haven't I got a saddle on? No, it's not some weird Christmassy kink. Uh, I've just run Again, a bunch of different prototype saddles on this bike all year, and I'll pull some of the production ones I've run on it as well out and do a separate test on them. But for now, uh, it's just an empty seat post uh, before another prototype saddle goes on there, which I can't quite show you yet. Uh, what else? Anything else on there? Uh, yeah, Shimano pedals. Not even sure why they're on there, because as you know, I normally run Hope now. And Fidlock bottle cage. Totally over any fear of losing Fidlock bottles now. Uh, go for them every time, just because I really like the uh, clean mounting on there. It's really useful if I'm videoing with the little Insta Go 360, which is another review I need to do, uh, but it just keeps the bike nice and clean. And yeah, still, still takes a bit of a fumble occasionally to get the bottle in and out, but in terms of security, I'm absolutely sold on that magnetic system. Plus, it means I get to plug me, yeah, Pete, he's, uh, Sponsorship, let, let's be honest on there. Uh, enduro bearings, I've not done a full refit bearings on these because they're actually fine at the moment. I really should. To be honest, I've just been lazy. Uh, the uh, headset's been absolutely golden in there and I'm gonna switch to uh, enduro bottom bracket as well. Uh, when I move the cranks out, because I'm gonna put the race face cranks in there to continue testing on those. Uh, have I mentioned the Manitou forks? I think I have. Uh, very, very impressed so far. Really, really widely adjustable. Very, very plush. Uh, axle system is less of a pain in the ass than it used to be. And I kind of think they look really cool in a sort of retro way. 
uh, that slope crown. Got a lot of compliments on the aesthetics on that, and the dual chamber uh, air spring means you can really, really tune how the uh, system feels as well. So uh, yeah, full test coming up on those, but definitely a uh, real contender for the sort of same market as Fox 34 and Pike, but it actually goes longer in travel, so you can get those in a 150 or the 140 that I'm running here. Okay, so that's the compilation roundup done. Check in for individual component reviews on some of the things I've called out already, and uh, keep checking back to see uh, what I do in terms of the next build on this Pace RC295. I have got plans to move it on, purely because I've now been running this bike, God, since COVID, I think, in two different colorways. And it's still a really great, really current bike and Pace deserve a lot of support as one of the original mountain bike brands, certainly over here in England. Uh, so I always like to give the uh, smaller guys a bit of a leg up in terms of profile if I can. But you may be something seeing something different, but similar for that kind of fast, 29 uh, trail bike category in terms of testing because it's kind of my sweet spot in terms of what the riding I do. But for now, I've been Guy Kestivan on Guy Kez TV, probably random randomly ran. I've been Guy Kestivan on Guy Kez TV, so make sure you sub. But for now, I've been Guy Kestivan on Guy Kez TV, talking about the mixed set kit collection I've been running on this bike, and if you could click for subscriptions notifications and gives us a thumbs up like that'd be awesome and obviously if you've got some cash in your pocket and you're prepared to become a patreon supporter on a monthly basis you get exclusive early and ad free edits as a thank you so big shout out to all the people's names for scrolling up at the end of this video and obviously a massive thank you to my channel supporters that's Giro Cycling UK, PT's Products, Enduro Bearings, Talk Nutrition, Crud XL Fenders and Hebtro Clo Clothing. Cheers, folks. Catch you for the next one.